Okay, quick tip before we start putting this together. Go ahead and take your grinder and get uh, the black stuff, the black oxide coating off of your parts before you weld them. 90% uh, of welding is uh, your pre-work, uh, your fitting, your grinding, your smoothing. If, if that's good, then your weld should be good. Um, one thing to note, take caution around this area. This is a machined fit. So they're supposed to fit together real, real snug, but you do want to get some of that black oxide coating off of this area here. So just be careful. Just kind of nip it with the grinder, just enough to get the coating off. And don't go too deep because uh, you are taking some material off there, but leave some there so you still have that machine fit. And uh, when you get the sprocket all welded together, the thing still runs true. So just a tip there. Okay, just a couple quick things uh, I wanted to note before I started welding. I've got the sprocket clamped down uh, onto the hub. Now these uh, clamps are not super duper tight. I just wanted to keep it uh, pressed tight against the hub, uh, but not distorted. I don't want it to, to do one of these things. Another thing, uh, if, if you have a way to preheat it, I would I recommend that. I'm just using regular old map gas. Uh, this is some pretty thick steel, and if you've seen my welder in the background of some of the videos, it's just a Millermatic 135. It's a 110 volt welder, which it'll get this done, but it doesn't hurt to come in here and uh, preheat a little bit. Now, I've been doing that for a few minutes. I'm not gonna get it super duper hot. It's not totally necessary to preheat it, considering this isn't exactly a super high torque application. The welder should be able to get enough heat in there that you'll get good penetration on your weld and you won't have any problems with that. But if you have a way, if you have even just a propane torch, uh, get in there and heat this up a little bit. You can even go and uh, put it in the oven. You know, just turn the oven on to 250, 300, something like that. Put it in there for about 10 minutes and uh, then bring it out and weld it. But it's not absolutely super necessary to preheat it. But if you have a way to do it, then I recommend doing it. Okay, so I got four good tacks uh, on the hub and sprocket assembly. And I moved the clamp just there in the center just to hold my work piece in place. I got it clamped to this thick piece of quarter inch with my ground cable. And so now I just need to come in here and weld. So I'll do that and uh, then come back and take another video. All right, and here we have the sprocket all finished welded. Uh, you can see the preheating did a whole lot of good, actually. Uh, we got a real nice, flat, uh, just barely sort of convex uh, weld. So, And you can see the heat index here on the uh, inside of the hub. And you can just see right in this area, this is where I started my weld and went around. I had to stop a couple times. But right in there, you can see the weld is just a little bit cold. Right in there. Uh, but that's it, you know, the preheating definitely helped. Uh, so if you have the means to do it, then I recommend doing it. Um, but it's not totally necessary, but it definitely helps a lot. So we'll wait for this to cool off a little bit and uh, then we'll get it mounted on the bike. Okay, and here you can see I got the uh, sprocket all finished. It's nice and cooled, cooled down now. And I took the grinder and I got in there and I took there some weld spatter uh, here on the sprocket. Some of it was pretty close to uh, the teeth and so you want to get that off because it can uh, interfere with uh, how your chain meshes with the teeth. I didn't I looked all over I didn't find any spatter that got into the teeth actually. So this piece is done and just to give you a uh, demonstration on the size difference there it is this is the 14 tooth original sprocket. So we got that done. Now we'll just go and see if it fits on the jack shaft. And there we go. Fits on the jack shaft just fine. Uh, the heat didn't uh, warp it uh, really at all. Uh, there's no play and spins nice. And so you can see, I'll come back here. It's pressed right up against that locking collar, but that's not a problem. As I'll pan up just a little bit. Actually needs to come out a little bit about like that to uh, line up with the uh, uh, clutch sprocket. So we're good there. And uh, so I guess next thing I'm gonna do is uh, make the chain for it.
All right, well, I tried to get a chain made, and uh, I realized a problem that I was actually a little bit worried about when I bought this sprocket. This is a number 40, or it takes a number 40 chain. This is a number 41 chain. They're kind of interchangeable. Uh, I went online and looked, and this is a this um, clutch sprocket is interchangeable between a number 40 and a number 41 chain. I have a number 41 chain. However, a number 41 chain does not fit on a number 40 sprocket. You can see it's just bouncing all over the place. Um, so, I'm going to have to go buy a number 40 chain uh, to run from the clutch to the new sprocket. So, but I, I did take it out and uh, tried to ride it a little bit. You can see some of the marks there, some of the little shrapnel and kind of junk that's on that uh, sprocket. And actually, and this chain was you know skipping around a lot, and uh, it still actually pulled pretty good, believe it or not, even with the chain kind of slipping like that. It, it was a noticeable reduction, so I'm excited to see what happens when I actually get the right chain on there. So, but that's for another day. Uh, the stores are closed, and uh, so I'll have to go tomorrow or Saturday or something. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, a number 40 chain will fit on a number 41 sprocket. A number 41 chain will not fit on a number 40 sprocket. So, there you go. And I just want to mention why I did the uh, gear reduction up here on the jack shaft instead of back here at the rear sprocket. Right in here, you can see where the chain almost comes in contact with the chain stay. There is literally about an eighth of an inch between the chain and the chain stay. What I was worried about with going with a larger diameter rear sprocket was I would lose that uh, I would lose that clearance there because the chain stay tapers in towards the bottom bracket and I was worried if I went with that larger diameter like 56 tooth or 62 or 64 or whatever tooth larger diameter rear sprocket that I would lose that clearance and my chain would actually be contacting uh, my chain stay so that's why I went with the uh, gear reduction uh, up here at the front at the jack shaft uh, instead of there at the rear. Uh, it doesn't matter when you go with these chain driven vehicles without a transmission it doesn't matter where you put the reduction uh, the reduction is the reduction whether you take it from here or you take it from the rear end it doesn't make a difference so that's why I went with this one like I said earlier I'll just have to make a new uh, chain shroud to go over this I picked this sprocket because it's almost the same diameter as uh, the clutch in which case I just used that four inch piece of uh, exhaust tubing that I used before to make the curve around the clutch I just do it again back here no big deal and uh, so there you go uh, I'll have to get a new chain uh, but that's for another day so keep watching uh, I've gotten some new subscribers lately and I appreciate y'all uh, subscribing to my videos and uh, I've gotten quite a few comments lately and some good comments and I appreciate that as well so I'm glad y'all are enjoying the videos and uh, I'll continue to uh, to make them keep making refinements to this thing so thanks for watching